Bruce Lawn. All right, this is the one that some of you guys have been asking for. Uh, Reach Records' newest artist, the man, the myth, the legend. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Hovi. What up, man? Thank you for being here, boss. Yo, thank you for having me. I've been excited for this one. Yeah, man. Been excited. Uh, so I was, we were talking offline a second ago uh, about the first time I saw you perform and you were performing with Tori. Uh, shout yeah. out to to, uh, to Tori uh, Desha- Deshaun, right? He says that's name, Deshaun. Deshaun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. And uh, we were at A3C Festival in Atlanta 2019. And I was walking in. I saw you two performing. And I had known I had got wind that Reach, got, got wind that Reach, and Lecrae and, and Ace had signed a new artist, but I didn't know who it was. And then I walked in, I saw y'all performing, and I and I turned to RG and I said, that's the new artist that Reach signed, pointing at Tori. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then RG oh, was man. like, yeah, because y'all were rocking out together. I think y'all were doing like a verse or a hook together, yeah, so yeah. like that. And then like a couple hours later, I realized, no, it's it Hovi, not, uh, not Tori. So super funny, but um, it's uh, my brother, I, though. I think... At that moment, but both of y'all are, by the way, incredibly talented. But I think at Thank that you, moment, man. it was obvious that there was something there, that the energy that you had on stage, the confidence, your ability to rock out, especially as a fellow Caucasian brother in this hip hop thing. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yo, this dude, this dude got it. And then I don't think I understood that you were on the 116 playlist uh, and I didn't put it all together till later and then seeing right, it all right. come to fruition, bro. So let's just jump into it, man. How did you yeah. connect with Lecrae and the Reach guys and how did how did that all come together? Yeah, so where do we start? So I was in college. I was a freshman in college and it was like the beginning of, of college. So it was like the, the start of it. And I had like some songs on SoundCloud and, you know, just doing my thing. I would make music out of my room. So I had a blast doing that. And then um, I remember I was I was a big Reach fan, so big Reach fan. Loved Lecrae, Andy, everybody, Trip, Tadashi, everybody. Um, and so I remember seeing this uh, article that said that Reach had signed a new A and R. I was like, oh, that's dope. So and it said it was Ace Harris. And so I followed him on Twitter. And then I remember looking at my timeline one day and seeing Ace tweet, and he said, "Send beats." Mm. Um, and didn't say send songs. He said send beats. And, uh, <laughs> but I was like, as a young SoundCloud rapper from Brunswick, Georgia, I was like, you know, I'm just going to shoot my shot and send some songs. Mm. Um, and so I sent him like, I want to say it was three songs. Mm-hmm. It was either two or three songs. And he hit me back. Like, I think it was a day or two later. He's like, yo, these are dope. Keep sending me records. Mm. I think actually one of the things he asked was like, did you make this beat? And I actually did make one of the beats on there. And um, so you did send beats, kinda. Uh, it was, <laughs> to him, maybe it was that, but to me, I was like, man, I'm making songs. Um, but uh, yeah, man. After that, I kept sending him music, and every once in a while, you know, he would give me a really impactful word of advice, or just yeah, give me tips on how to keep going. But keep in mind, for me, shooting my shot, I'm just continuously sending him songs. So mm-hmm. even rough drafts, I'm sending him as much as I can. And it got to a point where he started to see my growth. Mm. And um, I it was I remember it was two records in particular that kind of like perked his interest. And it was uh, one of the songs is actually still on DSPs. It's called Wasted Times. Mm-hmm. And then another song was unreleased. It was called PSA. And he, he tells me to this day that PSA was the one that made him go, okay. Mm. Like this guy, like, you know, basically had the interest in signing me. And uh, I remember, long story short, I, he brought me up to Atlanta to the A3C conference. And it was cool because during that time, man, he just, he got to hear my heart, get to know me. I got to know him. Mm. The first time I met him, Brez in his house, running in place, working out. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> so he's working out, just down to earth dude. And, uh, man, he would take me through the cookout drive through. thought it was the best thing ever. Um, you know, we were just hanging out. Uh, he brought me to an industry event just to like take me, just like let me see stuff. Yeah. And I like freestyled for a bunch of like, and it wasn't a Christian thing either, it was just an event and mm-hmm. got the freestyle for a bunch of people. So all that was really cool. And that was a big moment in the building process because he really got to see what I was on. Yeah. So keep in mind, this is 2019. 
I'm about to move to Atlanta. So is this the same A three C conference or was this before when when this I This is the started? year before. This is the, this year, is before. the year before. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, year before. So this is right before I move into Atlanta. I wanna say we're in December and I'm about to move. And I remember talking to Ace on the phone and I was like, yo, I guess I don't even remember all I was we were talking about, but I just remember him asking me, saying, Yo, are you still moving to Atlanta? Mm. Because in that call, he had expressed to me that he was basically cutting off the build that we were doing. Because he was just like, man, I just, it's going to be hard to develop an artist right now. And for him, he would always express it as like a non-reach thing. Mm. It was kind of like air, in the air. Because like the first time he brought me, he brought me to the office just to like kind of be around. But it was nothing like super serious. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, he was basically telling me like, man, I just don't have the time. Mm. And he was like, are you still moving to Atlanta? And I was like, yeah, I am. And because uh, I just had the urge to move. And so I did. And I moved. And, man, I just started getting my feet dirty and serving with uh, City Takers mm -hmm. out here with Scott Free. Yeah, shout out to Scott Free. That's the home. Yeah, man. He was just pouring into me and um, started serving. Started um, Zach Paradise. Started working with Zach Paradise a lot. And me and him had already built before me and Ace mm -hmm. he even were. I knew Ace before Zach, but me and Zach were more intentional. So I was working with Zach and then Ace kind of came back and started building with me again. And it was history. So, so there was just, a moment where Ace just kind of got too busy. It wasn't really making sense for him to try to develop an artist. And it yeah. was even in the air, not sure if this was going to go directly through reach or something else. Right. And so what was that, that break between you guys are building, you're sending them demos, you're developing to like, ah, bro, I don't know if I got the time to invest and then reconnecting. Like what was that window of time? So the reconnect, the window of time was after I moved. So I'm already in Atlanta. So okay. the reconnect is while I'm in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of it was like, oh wait, you're about this. You're actually here. You're serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was there. And then he also, the big thing was that I finished my project, Broken Heart, mm. over that time period. And he saw that I could finish a project. Mm -hmm. And then he was starting to do some things that started giving me hints like, are they finna sign me? Because they brought me in to do a brand brief mm -hmm. for fun. Or I don't know. I was like, then I realized like, oh, dang. Like I just kind of had an inkling like, this is wild. Yeah. You know, and I got reached out to from an, um, a smaller label before that and didn't like just kind sure. of kept a hold yeah. so it was cool like i was patient just chilling yeah making my stuff motions got on the playlist and then when they saw how motions did it was a rap and it okay. was a crazy idea to put motions on the playlist got it uh we were gonna put a different song on there and he said nah put this song on there yeah and motions was mad did. different for that whole playlist because it definitely had a more rock emo vibe compared yeah, to some yeah. of the other stuff so i think that was a good call when did you meet lecrae in this process i met lecrae in 2019 that a3c festival uh, he knew that I was out. He knew I was out here. I want to say the first time, yeah, was when Ace brought me to the office. Um, he kind of just stopped in and said, what's up? I mean, it was really quick, but it was dope. So, and he, he was aware, but Cray was just so busy. I think he was working on his album and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. But it, a lot of it was between me and Ace. So what was the window of time between, yo, you stopped building with Ace to now you're coming back in the building? Oh, and right. Out? A couple months, maybe okay. like two months, Got a it. month or two. It, it wasn't long. It was like, it was just once he saw I moved, I guess he was just like, man, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. In a good way. It was cool. I think what's dope is that there's more than just an email exchange and then you sign to reach records. There's an email exchange, oh, yeah. there's relationship, then you're willing to pick up and move, then they see that you're involved and you're active and you're serving in the community. And then it was like, hey, let's test this song. So from a business standpoint, they were also looking at the numbers and the analytics to make sure oh, that what yeah. they had was a proof of concept. And it wasn't just, yeah, yeah. we like this kid. But no, 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 we like this kid. He got the grind. He's willing to sacrifice. He's moving. He's uprooting his entire life. And there's analytics and math to back up that what mm -hmm. we have here is going to work. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, yeah, it was those things. It was the definitely numbers as a business, but also the vetting process of my heart. Like they had to get to know me because Reach is a family, mm -hmm. and um, they're very intentional about. You can't just sign anybody. Like yep. you got to be careful because yep. your name's on it. Yep. Yep. Yo, Hovey, I'm not sure if you know, man, but 53% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed 
to this channel. So if you're watching this, guys, give this video a thumbs up. Let us know where you're watching from and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now back to our regularly scheduled program with the homie Hovey. So Hovey, you come into this thing, you're making more explicit Christian music than most people have grown accustomed to expecting from Reach Records. Was there any... Uh, is there any tension there? Do they want you to be more explicit about your faith and outspoken about Jesus? Because obviously yeah. Reach started extremely expli explicit about Jesus and the faith. And then as Lecrae and Andy kind of blew up more in the mainstream, it kind of became uh, you know a bit more covert and wanting to yeah. go wider. And then it seems like with you, uh, you're outspoken, unapologetically Christian, Jesus, this is what it is. How, yeah. is, that, how is that all coming together? That was the main factor for them, actually. Okay. So they loved it because they're like, "Oh, wow, this dude." They basically what they're saying was like, "Man, this reminds me of like," I guess it reminded them of like the Gravity days, basically. Mm. Where it's like, "Wow, okay," mm. like we see his heart and it's clear. And so, like, my message was clear and what I was trying to convey. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, for them it was cool because man, they embraced it. And for me, that was my mission, bro. Like. I wasn't going to compromise what the spirit was putting in my heart mm. for reach or not. Yeah. I had that set in my heart. Like, bro, I'm doing what he's showing me. Like I had the vision for broken heart before reach was interested in broken heart. It mm. was what was on my heart. That's awesome. What he put on. Yeah. So, so you yeah. stuck to your guns, even if you were, you know, if, even if it wasn't going to work out with them. Yeah. And now it seems like between you and Wande, they're kind of coming back to their roots. Is that like a fair assessment in terms of yeah, what's happening there? Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, you know, I love what each person is doing because everybody's being who God made them to be. Um, but yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I know for me, I was a big one, one six fan growing up. So, uh, that's my roots. And so it is, but they definitely are going back to the roots. Cause that's what I'm doing. I'm yeah. trying to just speak from the spirit. It's yeah. still in a new way, but just mixing it up a little bit. But still keeping it Jesus, man. Still keeping it from the spirit. Amen. What do you think the current assessment is in terms of CHH? And now it's not always about Jesus. Now it's not always yeah. explicitly. So you got this 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 cool subgenre of, of of Christians making hip hop, Christians in hip hop, Christian hip hop. Yeah. But it seems like as Reach, you know, moved away from that methodology, the the entire community kind of went that direction right. and so we're in this weird in-between place where oftentimes christian hip-hop is really just like hip-hop without cussing right so like mm -hmm. what is your what is your thoughts and like what is your assessment of all that yeah so man if i'm being honest and transparent i struggle with it sometimes okay because i'm like man for, i know for me i crave to hear things that get my spirit going at the same time like i can't I can't knock somebody for one to to do what they're doing. That's their life, man, their music. And I respect a lot of people in this space that are doing that. But I think I just wrestle because it's called Christian hip hop. Mm. And so it's just like, man, I just, yeah, I just want to hear like people be vulnerable and real. Even if it's not always saying, talk, you know, giving people like Jesus died on the cross. Like may maybe you're just talking about a real life experience you had growing up in the streets. Mm. Maybe you're talking, you know what I mean? Whatever. But I just want to hear that vulnerability. Um, that's just something I hunger for and want to bring. Um, and that's the thing. If I'm not seeing it, I want to be it. So like, you know, I'm thankful. I am thankful though, that there's people that are bridging the gap for people who just want to hear something clean. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing. And I mm. think that's dope. Uh, just for me, man, I know my mission, I just want people to, to experience him and hear his heart when they hear my stuff. So, um, and that's just where I'm at, but yeah, man. Yeah. It, it's tough. That's awesome. I mean, I think what you're doing is cool because it is a breath of fresh air to a lot of people and the music is fire and it's timely, meaning that it's relevant sounding. It sounds like today. It doesn't sound like retro, you know, anything. And I think, right, right. I think it has a degree of that. But I agree with you that, like, we also do need just music that's sometimes just clean music from yeah. the church as well as music that is for the church. And I think oftentimes that's, that almost becomes a false dichotomy, right? It's like 100. you have to do one or the other. And it sounds like you would say you, you're hoping to do both. You're hoping to make music yeah. from the church and for the church. Oh, yeah. No, I. it's funny. Yeah, I think I'm 
I do both and I just, I'm just being myself. Yeah. Like, like, uh, in my upcoming album, you'll hear it. I mean, it's got tons of joints that are just super like spirit filled and other joints that are spirit filled, but are speaking from a whole other context of like maybe me in high school and insecurities I faced. Mm. And you might not hear the word God, but it's like, he's in it Yeah, because it's my, part of the, his story. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah, good. Bro, I'm, I'm doing both. All right. So yo, the latest visual came out with Andy and oh, yeah, you yeah. jumping into your acting bag. I, I, I loved seeing that. So I got to ask, oh, and, and maybe this is a dumb question, but hey, man, I give people the benefit of the doubt. Is that you breakdancing or is that oh, a body no. double? Heck no, that's not me breakdancing. <laughs> the point was, the, it was the humor of it. I, it was my idea because I was like, bro, that's funny to me. Like having a Napoleon Dynamite type thing where it's yeah. like, <laughs> just this really super fake edited thing like i just i don't know i wanted to try it so yeah that's not me shout out to my guy david from uh from church he did it david He's making you look great man yeah yeah and it's funny because like i feel like when i watch it back that they might have edited my face in there on one of the rotations <laughs> that's why i'm asking because it, it looked like it you. looks like it and yeah. I, I want i need to look back but like we have the same frame so that really helped but um yeah man we yeah we pulled it off shout out to oust man the production team they pulled it off bro yeah, man. It was, yeah. What's it like now? You, you grow up on Christian hip hop. You, you're yeah. a fan of all these guys. And now you're in music videos and on songs with some of these guys that were your heroes in a lot of ways. Yeah. What, what, what's that like? Is it set in yet? Are you, enjoy, are you present and enjoying it? Like I'm enjoying it. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's super cool, bro. And I think definitely sometimes I don't realize because I'm just in it. You know what I mean? I don't realize like how everything's came back full circle, but it is uh, super amazing, bro. And if anything, it's been really cool to meet these dudes in real life and just get to like see their hearts mm. like behind the scenes, you know, like the Lecrae that you hear is the Lecrae I see. Mm. And it's like, wow, this dude's real. Same thing with Andy, with all, all the dudes and Wande, like mm. it's realness for real. And so, yeah, bro, it's, it's really amazing. I think, like I said, though, sometimes, I don't realize how cool it is because I'm just in the grind, <laughs> like trying to knock out stuff, and projects and shows, all that stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, new Gallup poll just came in and we found out. Uh, I was telling Hovey about it earlier. 53% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. So if you are one of those goofy 53% that aren't subscribed, do me a solid, hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you don't miss the next time I go live with one of the next emerging artists that's going to go on to do great things. So hit that subscribe button. Back to my conversation with Hovey. Um, tell Here. me this. What is your vision for you and where you want to be five yeah. years, ten years, two years? And what is your uh, hope and heart also for Christian hip hop and where yeah. you would like to see this go in the next five, 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I'm just being completely honest. I have no idea. Hey, fair enough. That's a good, that's a, that's what, a fair answer. I literally don't know what two years is going to look like. Cause like, man, I find my desires just building up every day. And it's like, I don't know where God's leading me, but I know it's something beautiful. Mm. So like, you know what I mean? Like, I all I know is what he's got me doing now. Like, you know, it would be a blessing to get to keep doing it five years from now. It'd be a blessing to see things grow forwards in commercial success. But at the end of the day, bro, like, I really believe in doing it for the one person mm -hmm. that needs him. And so, um, yeah, bro, I, I don't know. I'm just enjoying now, like, to be honest. That's awesome. Yeah. What would you like to see Christian Hip Hop in the next five, 10, 20 yeah, years? Yeah, um... I just want to see it for me, man. This this for me. I'd love to see it just get closer to his heart mm. as in just see, hearing dudes like real selves. I think, and now this isn't pointing at everybody, but I think there's just times where the platform and the, the growth can sometimes put a wrench in our heart. And mm. so I just want to hear dudes' hearts yeah. for the Lord. I want to hear testimonies and vulnerability. And also too, I want to see new artists be appreciated more mm. in the next five, 10 years. That's one of my missions. And as you know, people get to know me, they'll see, I really care about the younger artists. I will post about them, talk about them until the cows come home. Because for me, I was in those shoes and I still am. And so, um, and I care about building up these dudes. That's and, awesome. Man. And women. So, yeah. 
you serve in the City Takers thing, you and Scott Free, uh, local ministry in the area. Talk about the importance of you as an artist having that anchor of, of local fellowship, local yeah. connection, serving, being a part yeah. of something, and, and how much of a role that plays into just being a one with, yeah. with the Lord. Yeah, so it's been hard going there recently because I've I'm engaged, so I'm like, hey, you know, congratulations, bro! Thank you, thank you. So I'm in Houston a lot with with Rachel and just serving her. But uh, the time that I have got to spend, man, at City Takers, like what I say is, it's a family, and you're constantly pointed back to checking your heart because, mm-hmm. like, the one thing that City Takers is not about is building up all this commercial success but yeah your heart not being in the right place man you're not getting on that stage if your heart ain't right mm. they just and, and if maybe your heart ain't right they find out it's like hey man like you know what i mean we got to get this right and it's all about serving the one person it's all about um being there for the least of these yeah you know what i mean it's all about feeding people uh having conversations with people putting up chairs like it's the way City Takers operates is it's the hands and feet of Christ. It's not like this, uh, it's not this label thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what's so dope about it. Do you think, do you think we need more artists and specifically Christian hip hop artists plugged into local churches and things like City oh, Takers? Oh, 100. 100. Yeah. We just need people plugged into a body, getting yeah. discipled, uh, serving, um, being vulnerable with people. Yeah. We need a lot of that. I need more of that. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. Because I think what happens is, and we've seen this repeatedly on different scales, but when people get access to excess, when people get access to excess money, access to excess Uh sin, excess travel, (laughs) excess relationships, right? Excess clout, excess influence. When people get access to excess, if you're not prepared, you're not accountable, you're not grounded, it it ruins a lot of artists, man. And and it can really hurt people. Uh, both creatively and spiritually, right? And I think the Mm -hmm. spirit side does hurt the creative, meaning if you're a Christian, you're signed to a Christian hip-hop label, but yet you're dealing with stuff and now you feel like you're detached because now you're dabbling in sin. That wasn't available to you two years ago, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting here and you feel like an imposter because you got this Christian persona, but yet you know you're not really all the way there. And if there's no anchor, there's no local church, there's no people asking you those hard questions, man. It, I think it can yeah. really turn into a slippery slope. And we've okay. seen it far too often. I mean, we've saw we've seen it in pastors, but let alone could I imagine what that's like being a kid that's 21, 22 years old, not married, yeah. you know, and struggling with that. It starts with the little things, man. It starts with the little things. Yeah. What advice would you have for like the next generation of Christian hip hop artists? Not from a business standpoint, because I think your come up story is interesting, but I, from yeah, a yeah. personal standpoint, you seem like you're adjusting well and Jesus is still a huge priority for you. How oh, would you give the, that next generation of artists that are coming up in the footsteps of Hovey and say, hey, this is how you remain grounded in Christ, regardless of what life throws at you? Yeah. Okay. So I think first thing, man, is like stay seeking him. Mm. Like, I don't want to say that's some broad general thing, but for real, stay seeking him, like stay in the word. Cause I know for me, when I'm not in the word, when I'm not praying and I'm not talking to him, I find myself just feeling so dry and empty. Mm. And uh, even though he's in me, it's like when I'm not disciplining myself, it's just not good, bro. Like some of my mentor would say is your discipline will become your delight. So I say like, man, if you, if you are lacking discipline, if you're lacking like a fireman, just go after him. Yeah. Because if you seek him with your whole heart, you'll find him. So, and that's for anybody, but even as an artist, like it's hard because, you know, if you're not holding on to him, you're going to be holding on to something else. Mm. And so, man, let him be your best friend. Let him be your source of peace. Um, and it'll really help too, putting things into perspective of who's the most important because he will be the most important when you're consistently fearing him um, and seeking him. I'd say, yeah. And then also get discipled. Find somebody maybe even outside of the music that just loves him. Yes. That will pour into you. Yes. Get discipled. Because, bro, they'll give you a whole other perspective and be like, hey, man, this music thing you're doing, you think it's that great. But, hey, there's a God who loves you, man. Yeah. You need to know him. That's yeah. eternal life is knowing him. Yeah. So have um, have discipleship, mentorship, and have brothers you can talk to. Mm. Have sisters you can talk to. Like for me, I got a group of brothers that I can go to and be like, hey man, I'm struggling. Mm. 
You know what I mean? And I want to, I want to go to them more often, but I find the freedom of like prayer. If they're praying over me or just knowing that they're there for me, that they're going to listen. Like it's beautiful, bro. And that's, that's what, that's what God wants for us, man, is to be, you know, in a community where we can be free because we have each other, you know, to, to lean on. So yeah, get around people that love him. Amen. Mic drop, ladies and gentlemen. Hovey, bro, uh, I gotta have you on more often. I, I love your heart, bro. I love your I love your spirit. And I think once um I wanna dive deeper as I sit with the music more, because I'm really excited to sit yes. with, with the new stuff, man. Thank you. And I think it's I can't wait for you to hear it. Bro, uh, I got it. I got it. I just haven't like sat through the whole thing. I skipped you got through the it. Ma- yeah, you got, I got the mixed and mastered. I got the like one of the earlier drafts. I got it like I'm a, two I'm weeks send ago. You to, okay, I, I got the finals. So I'm gonna send you yeah. those. Let's have you on again, bro, because I because I want to talk more about the music and I want to yeah. talk more about your your heart for everything you just talked about the community side because I think there's some really practical tips that people can walk away from this. Um, yeah, a lot of people are excited about you know the come up story, the grind, and all like, and I think that stuff is I think that stuff is dope. But I think I'm more interested in like how do we help the next generation sustain how do we mm-hmm. help the next generation stay on the path to love jesus um and we on, we're connected bro. to a lot of folks behind the scenes so we know how it gets and we know how hard it can be um so yeah. that, that that's like outside outside of anything bro i just want to encourage you and just say man I, we, don't, we don't know each other super well but all in all you seem like a very well healthy stable christian Thank like you, and man. i could care less about what kind of christian rapper or christian artist you are but yeah, nah. the fact that you're a solid christian just gives me a ton of hope for where christian hip hop will hopefully go thank 5 you. 10 yeah. years from now man so um yeah. dude thank you for being on man let's let, like when this album's out let's do this again let's go deeper uh guys make sure you follow hovey what drop all your handles i think it's just hovey on yeah. everything right yeah it's uh hovey official so h u l v as in victor e y official at gmail dot gmail.com oh my gosh hovey official on instagram <laughs> did you just Twitter. give out your email, email to everybody oh my gosh that's actually not my email praise god <laughs> hovey official gmail.com yo go follow this man support the music check it yeah. out uh i'm i'm extremely grateful uh for you being here bro i, I can't wait to Thank see you. everything that god's gonna do and how it's gonna flourish and how it's gonna just go beyond even what we think and and i'm bro. and i'm happy that like I don't know, man. I'm just happy with where the trajectory of the CHH thing is going. Because sometimes, me too, is it this feels like a disconnect, and I'm and I love the fact that Ace and Reach and and Lecrae and these guys yeah. have a heart for kids like you. And, and not kids, you're a young man. I mean, like try to little bro you, but like you're a young no, guy. I'm a kid. You know what I mean? I'm a, how, yeah. how you're 22, 21? 22, 22, 22, newly yeah, yeah. engaged. So there's gonna yeah, be a lot of changes, amazing. man. Yeah, yeah. Yo, do you mind if I do something? I got some art. Can I uh can I shout out a couple of new artists? Since please. We're talking about the artists. Please. Hey, all right. So I got a couple of dudes y'all need to go listen to. Uh Big Breeze. Um, so he's incredible. And another dude, man's just real, man. He's vulnerable. So Big Breeze, and then they have a group called Vert. And <laughs> man, Vert is it's him, Scooty Wop, and Godfear. And bro, they are solid, bro. So Big Breeze and Vert. Go check out my guy 350. Another just really genuine. Hey, person. shout out to 350. He's on our Patreon community. Yeah, man. He's got a heart for God and just he really speaks what he's been through. And then um my, of course my brother Tori Deshaun. He's fire. Fire. He's got some crazy stuff. Me and him got a, a fire record coming. Um I can't wait for that. And then one more person, uh, Caleb Gordon. I think he's the kid's got all the potential in the world. Uh, and I just see something different in him, man. So yeah, man, go check 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 those dudes out, cause uh, well, I'm doing shout outs too. Then let's go. Let's yeah, shout out running. the homie Bats, the oh, the, Bats. the the homie uh, I am rescued, the the homie uh, Alcott. Um, who else? I'm I'm forgetting some Luther Luther crates. We got yo some if you I feel like you've tuned into our Fan Love Friday thing, bro. Uh, there's such a, 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 a talented community of artists coming in the next generation. And I yeah. feel like a lot of what I'm supposed to be doing is just contending for the faith, man, and just making sure that people have uh-huh. healthy foundations so that we're not all Ew. deconstructing and picking apart the faith. And you know what I mean? Just ended up in, in, in unhelpful places. And so mm-hmm. um, that, that that's why I'm really uh, intrigued and inspired by what you're doing, bro. So thank you. Shout I out appreciate to you, guys. you, man. Yeah, man. Being thank you, brother. 
Yo, yeah. guys, that's Hovey, man. Go go follow him. Get ready for the new music. I think I think you guys are going to be impressed. I can't wait to hear. Send me the mastered version because that's another thing. Is like they were like, yeah, April it's not. 9th. April 9th. April 9th. What is it called? Christopher. Christopher. Okay, guys. Christopher. Thank you so much for being here. Again, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following Hovey on all platforms. And we will have him on again after yeah. April 9th to go a little deeper on the album. Bro, thank you so much for being here, brother. This is awesome. Thank you, man. Hey, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you, bro. Joshua the King came down and bore it all. Yeah. Conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace Birth pains causing the body to dilate On a first name basis with the 